Endotracheal tubes typically have a left facing bevel at the tip. A bevel tip will pass much easier through the vocal cords than a tube with a cross cut distal opening. The bevel is left facing rather than right facing to allow a better view of the ETT tip entering the field of view from the right to left and then passing through the vocal cords. While a tube with a bevel tip is easier to pass through the vocal cord, it is more likely to occlude when the beveled opening makes contact with the tracheal wall than a tube with a cross-cut distal opening. The Murphy eye provides an alternate gas pathway should this type of occlusion at the tip occur. Generally speaking, there are two types of endotracheal tube cuffs in use. High volume low pressure cuffs and low volume high pressure cuffs. When the cuff is inflated, it forms a seal against the tracheal wall. This seal prevents gases from leaking and allows positive pressure ventilation. The seal also prevents matter such as regurgitated gastric contents going into the trachea. After intubation, the cough is inflated with air. This is done by attaching a syringe to the pilot balloon. The pilot balloon is connected to the cough by a thin tube. As the syringe supplies pressurized air, the pilot balloon and cough inflate. Once the cough is inflated, the syringe is removed. Air does not leak out as there is a one-way valve at the pilot balloon. By filling the pilot balloon, one can estimate the amount of pressure in the cough. If the cough is leaking, for example, due to damage by the surgeon during a thyroidectomy, the pilot balloon will collapse. High volume, low pressure coughs have a larger surface area in contact with the trachea. This means that they apply a lower pressure against the tracheal wall and have a lower incidence of tracheal wall ischemia and necrosis. The seal is not as good as the seal in high pressure coughs because of the lower pressures and because the large cough may develop wrinkles that allow material to pass by the cough. Low volume high pressure coughs have a lower volume and the surface area in contact with the trachea is small. This results in a high pressure seal that is more effective than the one caused by high volume low pressure cuffs. However, this high pressure is more likely to cause tracheal ischemia and necrosis if used for a prolonged period of time. The endotracheal tube cuff pressure must be in a range that ensures delivery of the prescribed mechanical ventilation tidal volume, reduces the risk for aspiration of secretions that accumulate above the cuff without compromising the tracheal perfusion. A cuff pressure of 20 to 30 cm of water is recommended for the prevention of aspiration and ventilator associated pneumonia VAP. In general, in anesthesia practice, ETT cuff pressure is assessed by palpation of the cuff or cessation of audible leak around the cuff. It has been shown that continuous lateral wall cuff pressure above 30 cm water compromises blood flow and cuff pressure above 50 cm of water completely obstruct the tracheal wall blood flow. It has been also shown that compromised blood flow for 15 minutes resulted in superficial damage to the tracheal mucosa and digital balloon palpation corresponds poorly with the measured endotracheal cuff pressure 
and anesthetist experience corresponds poorly with measured cough pressures. The instrumental measurement and adjustment of cough pressure resulted in a significantly lower incidence of post-procedural sore throat, hoarseness, and blood stain expectorant. Endotracheal tube connectors connect the endotracheal tube to the breathing system. One end of the connector connects to the endotracheal tube and this end has a dimerer that depends on the endotracheal tube size. The other end connects to the breathing system and has a 15 mm outer dimerer. Endotracheal tubes are often not directly connected to breathing systems. Instead, to provide a more flexible connection, endotracheal tubes are often connected to a flexible catheter mount and the catheter mount is then connected to the breathing system. Most EDTs have a preformed curve called the McGill curve which makes tube insertion easier as the curve follows the anatomy of the upper airway. The McGill curve was a happy accident when Sir Ivan McGill first used single lumen rubber tubes for nasotracheal intubation in the 1920s. He cut them from a coil of tubing, hence they were curved, and found the curvature useful when inserting these tubes. The curve should make the use of a stylet unnecessary in most patients. Since most endotracheal tubes are made of polyvinyl chloride PVC, this may be visually clear or opaque. Plastic is not radio-opaque and therefore plastic tubes have a line of radio-opaque material that makes them more visible on a chest x-ray. Now, endotracheal tubes have an inner dimerer and an outer dimerer. The size of the endotracheal tube refers to its internal dimerer. Therefore, if you ask for a size 6 endotracheal tube, you are asking for one with an internal dimerer of 6 mm. The length of an endotracheal tube is measured from the end that goes into the trachea and is marked in centimeters. After intubation, you should note the length marking of the endotracheal tube with reference to a landmark such as incisor teeth or lips. This will help you to monitor the endotracheal tube position and detect if it has moved outwards or further down into a bronchus. An endotracheal tube that is too long for a given patient may be more prone to kinking and become obstructed. It can be cut to a more appropriate length if necessary. To help correct depth of placement, some endotracheal tubes have black markings proximal to the cuff. The vocal cords should be at this black marking. If the endotracheal tube has two markings proximal to the cuff, then keep the vocal cords between the two marks. However, these marking systems only provide a rough estimate and correct endotracheal tube position depth should always be confirmed by auscultation. Endotracheal tube are still considered the gold standard for securing and protecting the airway. Airway protection refers to preventing the lower airway, that is the trachea, the bronchial tree, and the lung from aspiration. Cough and endotracheal tubes seal the lower airway off at the cough location in the trachea. Even with a good cough seal, there is still a risk of microaspiration especially with long-term ventilation in the ICU setting. Again, because of the cough seal, endotracheal tubes allow for positive pressure ventilation without pressure limits. 
within a reasonable physiological range. Endotracheal tubes also facilitate passage of a range of devices into the lungs, such as suction catheters, fiber optic bronchoscopes, bronchial blockers for lung isolation, etc.